الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has encouraged us to recite salawat upon him and indeed our recitation of salawat upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a great means of rahmah a great means of blessing a great means of mercy for us Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that the one who recites salawat upon me once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers 10 mercies upon him Yes, subhanallah 10 mercies for one recitation of salawat salawat upon the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now it is up to us as to how much of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we want to reap. So if we want to reap more mercy, we recite salawat more. So let us make it our wadifa to recite salawat upon the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Yes, our honorable viewers of Madani channel, we welcome you back to another episode of the Silsila, the challenges of you. Youth. Yes, the challenges of youth. In the Silsila, we discuss various challenges that youth face through their lives. And yes, with youth, we know that inexperience does come. Experience will come through life later on. However, we don't want to wait for life to put us through some challenging times. And thereafter, we need to learn the lesson beyond that or after that. Rather, let us take Islamic guidance. Islamic guidance with regards to the challenges that youth face and how Islam teaches us and assists us and helps us to overcome those challenges and to make the best of our time, to make the best of our situations, insha'Allah ta'ala. So today we have a lovely, wonderful topic to be discussed. The topic is building healthy habits. We all want to build healthy habits, most definitely. We're going to build habits along life, but we want to ensure that those habits are healthy for us, that those habits will benefit us within the dunya and that they will benefit us in the akhirah, insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. So today we're going to have a wonderful discussion on this topic of building healthy habits. However, before we dive into this topic, let's listen to a beautiful kalam in praise of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us refresh our Iman, rejuvenate our hearts and feel closer to the beloved of Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah azza wa immediately after this kalam, we will dive headfirst into our topic for today. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. It is narrated from Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala an that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, whosoever recites salat upon me once, Allah Almighty bestows ten mercies upon him. The most beloved to me is the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Light of my dark heart is the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Puchigamola, 
نبی محمد صلی اللہ علی محمد صلی اللہ علی محمد When Allah will ask what have you brought I will then say the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Daulat jo chaho dono jahan ki Daulat jo chaho dono jahan ki Kar lo wazifa Naami Muhammad dil ka ujala نامی محمد صلی اللہ علی محمد صلی اللہ علی محمد If you desire the wealth of both worlds keep mentioning the name of محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم رکھو لحد میں جس دم عزیز ہو رکھو لاحد میں جس دم عزیز ہو مجھ کو سنانا نام محمد دل کا اجالا نام محمد صلی اللہ علی محمد صلی اللہ علی محمد O my dear ones, when you lay me to rest in my grave, do remember to mention the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Apne raza ke qurban jau, murshid piya ke قربان جاؤ جس نے سکھایا نام محمد دل کا اجالا نام محمد صلی اللہ علی محمد صلی اللہ علی محمد May I sacrifice my life for Raza who taught the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Masha Allah subhanallah That was a beautiful kalam in praise of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how wonderful you feel when you listen to the praise of your, my beloved, the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Now, inshallah azza wa jal, we're going to go into our topic, building healthy habits. Building healthy habits, inshallah ta'ala. Now, honorable viewers of Madani channel, we first ask ourselves, what is a habit? A habit is something that is a routine to you, something that you repeat often without even knowing it, without re even realizing it, it becomes sort of part of us. So habits are sometimes good and habits are sometimes bad. Now, when we do build a habit, when we do have a habit, we want for that habit to be a good habit, something that's gonna benefit us, not something that's going to be either just useless or we don't want it to be something that would cause our destruction either in dunya or in the akhirah or in the qabr. No, no, we don't want destruction. We want habits that will benefit us in dunya, in the qabr and in the akhirah, isn't it? I want that, you want that, we all want that. It's important that we build good and healthy habits so that it may benefit us, it may be healthy for us, it may benefit our lives, it may benefit those around us as well, inshallah azza wa jal. Because once you do build a habit, they say a habit stays with you. A habit stays with you. Once, once you have it, you have it, and it, you have to work really hard to come out of some habits. And of course, if you have to work hard to come out of habits, you also have to work hard to get into habits. So you want to work hard to get out of unhealthy habits, and you want to work hard to get into healthy habits. Because those habits, they stay with you, whether you realize it, whether you know it or you don't know it, they there. You know, habit in English is spelled H-A-B-I-T. H-A-B-I-T. So they say you remove the H, you still have a bit. You remove the A, you still have bit. 
you remove the B, you still have it because it just stays with you for such a lengthy period of time. You need to work yourself out of the bad habits and you need to work yourself into the good habits. Now, everyone wants to achieve excellence and everyone wants to do really well. There's a beautiful saying that we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act but a habit that you strive to ensure that every little thing is excellent. Every little thing that you do, every part of your life is excellent. It is to the best of your ability. You put in your entire koshish, you put in your entire efforts to ensure the excellence of every little part of life. And then one receives excellence, one achieves excellence throughout our lives. So subhanAllah, they say excellence is not a skill. Excellence is not a skill, it's an attitude. You need to build that attitude of excellence and that requires excellence repeatedly, over and over again. You know, to achieve something great in life, to achieve something big in life, often is not that easy. It requires hard work. It requires determination. It requires steadfastness. You gotta keep at it. You have to keep at it. You can't just leave it. When you leave it, you may just, what they say, break that habit. Yeah, if you want excellence, you gotta keep at it. You need to build excellence into your habit. It needs to become part of you. But how do you do that? Because if you just strive for a huge goal, for a challenging goal, for a big goal, it could be difficult. Along the way, sometimes we lose that steadfastness. Along the way, some people give up. So they need something to motivate them all the way. We need something to motivate us all the time to continue striving. And how is it that we can do that? The first thing we need to do is that we need to set our goal. When we set our goal, when we can envision our goal, when we can imagine our goal, then the goal seems closer to us. We know what we want. We've set a direction that this is the direction that I want to go in, my overall big goal. Thereafter, we start working on it. And we start working on it, not just by great strides or big strides, we start working on it by small steps. You take small steps in the direction of your goal. There's a lovely saying in English as well, that slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race, as long as the direction is good. You are continuously working on it. The beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves those ibadat that we are steadfast, that we are consistent on, even if they are small in number, even if they, were, they are just a little. So for example, someone can just Stand up one night and subhanAllah, he can perform 100 rak'at of nafil. However, someone else may stand up every night and perform two rak'at of nafil. Every night perform two rak'at of nafil. Those two rak'at that are performed with steadfastness holds more value than those 100 rak'at that are performed just once off, provided that one performs them with sincerity, with khushu, with khudu, with humbleness in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But where you build steadfastness, where you are continuous in something, that is something that holds value and that is something really truly of excellence, subhanallah azza wa jal. So we said we need to set our big goal, whatever it is that we want to achieve. It could even be long term and then we need to start taking little but consistent steps towards that goal. And along the way, sometimes people tend to lose motivation. How is it that you can keep your motivation high? The recipe is simple, subhanallah azza wa jal. You need to build success. Yes, build success. And what builds success? What breeds success? Success breeds success. It is your success that leads to you becoming more successful. And so when we set little goals in front of us in order to reach our main goal, and we try to consistently work on it, one step at a time, then for every goal that we achieve, every minor goal along the way to our major goal that we achieve, we need to be happy about it. We need to express gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding it. We need to feel the success along the way, every step of the way, feel the success that Alhamdulillah, I'm happy that I have accomplished this much. I'm one step closer to my goal. And then you will see that inshallah Azza wa Jal, that goal that was rather large, 
now seems closer and closer by every passing day and you feel more and more motivated to continue working in that direction by every passing day. Subhanallah, Subhanallah Azza wa Jalla. So we are talking about these habits that we need to build continuously and consistently working on them. And there are various factors that influence us into building habits, whether those habits be good or those habits be bad. So concept number one or factor number one that influences us towards building our habits, whether they be good habits or bad habits, is company. Yes, company, our suhba, the company that we keep influences us towards our habits, towards building good habits or building bad habits. Subhanallah. In Arabic, there's a beautiful saying, as suhbatu mu'athiratu. Suhba is mu'athira. Suhba, your company affects you. Your company will take effect on you. This is a major concern. This is a major misconception among the youth that I will spend time with certain friends and even though they may have bad habits, but their habits are their habits. They will not rush off onto me. My honorable dear viewers of Madani Channel, please understand that our company, our company will cause effect on us. The habits of the people around us, the habits of the people close to us will one day become our habits. Just look around you. And, and think that I have certain people that are close to me and you will see that you have some quality of everyone who is very close to you. Psychologists say that you are a combination of the five most close people to you. And you'll notice that you have certain characteristics of this one, certain characteristics of that one, certain characteristics of the next one who is close to you. And yes, certain characteristics are your own as well. But you notice that you have those characteristics of those around you, those that you keep close because their habits tend to influence your habits. If you have a friend who is a pious person and who is namazi, who is in the beautiful Madani environment of Dawat Islami, then you will see that every time you're sitting with him and the time of a salah comes, that he wants to go and perform salah. He is in the habit of leaving whatever it is that he's doing at the time of salah and going and performing salah. So subhanallah azza wa jal, after a little while you will see that you too will start to develop that beautiful habit of ensuring that you leave everything at the time of salah and that you go and perform salah. What a wonderful habit it is. That the adhan, when you hear the adhan, it just draws you towards the masjid. It draws you towards the pleasure of Allah. It draws you towards standing in the court of your Rabb, Azza wa Jalla, and performing ibadah, performing salah, worshipping Allah Azza wa Jalla as you should. So subhanallah Azza wa Jalla, that habit of his, or that habit of hers for Islamic sisters, when they are in the company of other Islamic sisters who are namazi, who are people who perform salah, you will see that you too will develop that habit of going and performing salah at the time of salah. Beautiful example of, of our company and the effect that that company has on us. When you enter the company of a musk seller, of a perfume seller, then what happens if you enter his shop? Either you will buy some perfume or just the company, the environment of that shop will rub off onto you such that when the next person meets you, then they will notice, they will pay attention and they would, they would note that you have a wonderful scent of perfume of ithar emanating from you. Subhanallah, that is just because you were in the company of the perfume seller, of his perfumes as well. So Subhanallah, you also became perfumed. And if you are in the company of a blacksmith, then even though you yourself are not doing anything with the fire, however, because of the company of the blacksmith and because of the company, the environment of his, his shop, the environment of his workshop, that scent of the fire, the smell of that fire will also go onto your clothes such that the next person who meets you would notice and would, pay, would take note that you have the scent, the scent and the smell of fire upon your clothes, or you could just burn your clothes, and thus that took effect on you in that way. So your sahba, your company does play a role, does impact on you and the kind of habits that you do gain and that you do achieve. So pay very careful attention, pay very careful attention to the company that you keep. Also, pay careful attention to the thoughts that you have. 
Yes to the thoughts that I have. Yes, pay careful attention to the thoughts that you have. Why? Because your thoughts tend to become your actions. Your thoughts tend to become your actions. There is a chain that first it starts with the thoughts and then it moves into becoming your actions. And as you consistently carry out those actions, those actions then become your habits. So you want good thoughts because the result of good thoughts is good actions. And the result of good actions is good habits, subhanallah azza wa jal, and vice versa. If the thoughts are bad, then it results in bad actions, and bad actions result in building bad habits that we want to stay away from. So we want good company. And subhanallah azza wa jal, another way of achieving that, although we may not physically have these personalities sitting with us, or we may not be physically in their company, but you can read about them. Read about the pious predecessors. Read their biographies. Read about their lives. And inshallah azza wa jal, as you read, as you read about their lives, their actions and their habits will influence you towards building similar habits in your life. Inshallah ta'ala. For example, if you read about the life of Ghothir Park, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jilani, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali, you will want to emulate him. You will want to perform ibadat the way he performed ibadat. You will want to fast the way he would fast. Perhaps you would just start with fasting on a Monday. Then you may start fasting on a Thursday as well. Gradually, as you try to keep with that, that will become your habit to fast on a Monday and Thursday. Then, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, you'll be motivated to fast in the month of Rajab, in the month of Sha'ban, in the month of Ramadan, you will already be fasting, subhanAllah, as it is fard for Muslims to fast in the month of Ramadan. Those who can fast, subhanAllah, they have the ability, they don't have a shari udhr, they will have to fast in the month of Ramadan. So you too, subhanAllah, by reading about the lives of the pious predecessors, you will start building habits, building your habits in line with their habits, and that will benefit you. It's benefited them. It's benefited them in the dunya, in the qabr, and in the akhirah. So if you follow in their footsteps, will it not benefit you? Most definitely it will benefit you in the dunya, in the qabr, and in the akhirah. Insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, for, for some of the bad habits that we may have, we sometimes, and many youngsters have this habit of procrastination. Procrastination, yes. Procrastination is where you have certain tasks that you know you need to achieve, you know you need to accomplish, but we leave them for a later stage. You would notice that youngsters may, may be schooling, may be in university, they may be studying, they may be working, and they'll have certain tasks and certain projects. And on the date that it's announced, that's not the date most people start. They will start right at the last minute when they know that it's due in just one week or it's due in just one day. So the night before, they are working on that project that is due the next day. So the night before, they are working on that project that is due the next day. This is procrastination and this is a terrible habit. This is a bad habit that you work on a task only when it is due almost immediately. This is something we need to work ourselves out of. We need to work ourselves out of this habit of procrastination. You know, subhanAllah Azza wa Jal, we need to be conscious about this. There's a clear line that we need to differentiate, that we need to, need to draw. And that is to decide what is important and what is urgent. What is important and what is urgent. We need to shift our focus towards that which is important instead of that which is urgent towards that is that which is important instead of that which is urgent. So there are certain things in our life that are important that we cannot leave, that we have to do. And then there are certain things in life that they just that they, they came up there and it's urgent and we just think it's needed now so we shift our focus towards that. When you shift your focus towards that which is urgent, you will continuously be chasing and running throughout your life. But when your focus is upon that which is important, then subhanallah azza wa jal, you will see ease in your life. You will see tranquility in your life. You know that in my day, I have five extremely important things and that is my five daily salah. So you ensure that at Fajr you performed your Fajr, at Dhuhr you performed your Dhuhr, at Asr you performed Asr, at Maghrib you performed Maghrib, at Isha you performed Isha. Those are the important things in life. Everything else which is urgent can wait. 
Even though it may be urgent, yes, even though it may be urgent, it can wait, inshallah Azza wa Jal. You work your life on that which is important. If important to you is that you sit every day and you recite at least three ayat of Quran Sharif, or one ruku' of Quran Sharif, or one juz, one para of Quran Sharif, subhanallah Azza wa Jal, that's important to you. So ensure that you do it, urgent things will come. Those things that need immediate attention, they will come. Trust me, they're going to come. But you need to decide that this is what is important to me and therefore I am going to accomplish it. If on a Thursday night, the weekly ijtima of Dawud Islam is taking place and that is important to you, inshallah Azza wa Jal, you will ensure that that takes place. You will ensure that you attend that weekly ijtima of Dawud Islam because it holds importance to you. Other things that are urgent, they will come up. Sometimes we are going to have to even delay that which is urgent. Yes, even delay that which is urgent because we need to accomplish that which is important to us. If it's important to us, we're going to ensure that that box is ticked, subhanAllah, that we have accomplished that which is important to us. And how is it that we can accomplish those things that we consider important to us? To let that become part of our lives, part of our habits. This is only possible through building a schedule. Through building a schedule, we should have our schedule for the day. We should have our schedule for the week. We should have our schedule for the month, subhanAllah Azza wa Jal. In Dawat Islami, your monthly advance schedule is also, monthly advance schedule is also encouraged. That in advance for this month, what is it that I need to do? What is it that I need to achieve? Which days have I set aside for these tasks? Which dates, which time have I set aside for these tasks? And subhanallah azza wa jalla, that forms part of your calendar. That forms part of those things that are important in your life and you ensure that you try to accomplish them. And when you stick to this schedule and you ensure that you carry them out day in and day out, that you carry out those tasks that are important to you, that play an important role in your life, then inshallah azza wa jal, you will see yourself building these healthy habits. You will see yourself building these healthy habits that you will be staying in the state of wudu, you will be performing your salah, you will be encouraging others towards performing good deeds, you will be acting upon your neka amal, you will have some time set in your month for your, for your madani qafila for that month, you will have time set every week for your weekly ijtima, you will be watching madani mudhakara because these things are important to you. They're not just urgent. Urgent things will come. These things are important. They're in your schedule. And inshallah, Azza wa Jalla, you will accomplish that. And you will see that you will build such beautiful and healthy habits. And inshallah, Azza wa Jalla, those around you will be looking at you and looking at your habits and wondering and thinking, if only I can also accomplish that. If only I can also achieve such excellence. Subhanallah, Azza wa Jalla. And your excellence will be achieved through healthy habits, through consistency, through steadfastness, because we know, as we've mentioned, that excellence is something you have to work on continuously. It's not a once-off thing. It's not just a once-off act. No, no. It's something that you achieve by continuously working on things. And subhanAllah Azza wa Jal, another beautiful way of building healthy habits is reflection. Reflection, yes, what do we mean by reflection? Not just the reflection in the mirror, but reflection where you ponder, where you ponder about your day, where you ponder about how your day went, where you have fikr in your mind that I, what did I do today? What did I accomplish today? How was my day? What should be different about my coming days? Subhanallah Azza wa Jalla, Dawud Islami gives us this opportunity by us filling out the Naik A'mal booklet that we take just about 12 minutes a day and we sit down and we fill in that booklet, whether it be the booklet itself or the app on our phones, that SubhanAllah, we can fill it on our phones, the Naik A'mal app. And we ponder that today, did I ensure that I made salam because making salam to Muslims is a wonderful and healthy habit? Did I ensure that I stay in the state of wudu because that is a healthy habit? Did I ensure that I ate less than my hunger demanded because that is an excellent healthy habit that benefits us, benefits our health so much? Subhanallah, that we don't feel lazy and we don't feel tired. We feel energetic. We can do things. We can accomplish things. We have strength and ability and energy for ibadat. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. So there are so many beautiful, healthy habits that we can achieve, that we can inculcate in our lives just by paying attention to filling nek a'mal. 
that booklet Nek A'mal and you'll see that if one day we didn't do it, if the second day we didn't do it, by the third day we're going to want to do it. Why? Because we are reflecting upon our deeds. We are reflecting upon what we did. We are reflecting upon that which happened during the day and we want to better that. We want our lives to be different, to be better than that. So subhanallah azza wa gradually you'll be building yourself into a healthy lifestyle, into healthy habits in line with the teachings of the beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah azza wa jal. Another beautiful tip is observation. Observation where we observe that what is it that is happening around me? What is it that I'm doing? What is it that other people are doing? In that way you will see things you like and just like that you will see things that you do not like. Things that you do like and things that you do not like. So we know that those things that we don't like, we will try not to do those actions. Those things that we do like, we will try to do those actions and we will try to be consistent in them inshallah azza wa jal until they become part of us, until they become our habits and they are good habits then inshallah azza wa jal we can live with them and hold on to them for the rest of our lives inshallah azza wa jal and who is that going to benefit? It's going to benefit you and I. It's going to benefit you and I because that which we do consistently, it's going to benefit us. And the question is, how long do I need to work on this? Because it may just seem like ages before I can actually have that as part of me, as part of my habit. So subhanallah, our sulahai kiram, our pious predecessors, the scholars of the ummah, they advise us that you need to work on it continuously and consistently, steadfastly for a period of 40 days. For a period of 40 days. And when you continuously do something for a period of 40 days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you that Allah azza wa jal makes that part of your adah, part of your habit. Subhanallah azza wa jal. So if you worked on something good continuously for 40 days, then you would have built that good and healthy habit in your life. That habit will become part of you. But on the other hand, if you committed evil or did wrong for a period of 40 days continuously and consistently, then unfortunately that will become part of your habit. And we don't want wrong and evil to be part of our habits. No, we want good to be part of our habits because goodness benefits us and evil causes our destruction. As it has destroyed people before us, we don't want to be from amongst them. We want to be from amongst those who have attained salvation, who have done well, who have achieved their purpose. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us tawfiq to act upon that which we have learned, to build healthy habits in keeping with the deen of Islam, with the teachings of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so that we may benefit and earn the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, so that it may benefit our lives, our qabr, and our akhirah. Insha'Allah, Azza wa Jal. Dear and honorable viewers of Madani channel, Jazakallah, we thank you for being with us through the, another episode of the Challenges of Youth, and we ask you to stay locked on to Madani channel. Stay locked on to Madani channel. So just as you have right now benefited from ilm deen from knowledge, from advices, from nasiha, that will benefit you in deen, in your dunya and in your akhirah. You will continuously receive those benefits through your Madani channel. Please do join us for the next episode of the Challenges of Youth where we'll discuss further into Islamic guidance to assist us to deal with the challenges that youth presents us with. Amin bijahi khatam in nabiyyin. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The challenges of youth. O youth in the path of Islam stand tall. O youth in the path of Islam stand tall. With patience and prayer you shall not fall. With patience and prayer you shall not fall.